Hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to our final night of Out of Many, a conversation conversation series featuring our national academicians participating in the digital annual exhibition, E Pluribus Out of Many. I'm Adrian Elise Tarver, the Director of Programs here at the National Academy. If you haven't yet had a chance to explore, explore the show, please do so. We're going to drop the link in the chat. Uh, the exhibition will be up through the end of the year, uh, and you can explore the exhibition uh, via that link. The exhibition contends with the challenge of creating a virtual, a virtual exhibition, not just during a waning pandemic, not just amongst social upheaval and political turmoil, but also amongst a group of artists and architects who are as different as they are interesting. E Pluribus features over 100 academicians and asks the question, what new futures can be created if Americans stop pursuing the ideal of national unity and accept our reality as an incongruent collective? Tonight, we have a special conversation. We're joined by E Pluribus curator, Dr. Kelly Morgan, and our own uh, chief curator of the National Academy, uh, Sarah Reisman, in conversation about the exhibition and the conversations they've been able to have over the past nine weeks. Also, a few months, months ago, I was able to have a conversation with Dr. Kelly Morgan about the E Pluribus exhibition, and we've recorded that conversation as a written interview on our website. So if you would like to learn more about the exhibition, about uh, what it was like for Kelly to curate the exhibition, um, and her curator curatorial practice and perspective in general, we're going to drop that link in the chat as well. After this conversation, as always, you can join us for a live Q&A with Sarah and Kelly. Uh, you can use the Q&A function at the bottom of the Zoom screen to drop your questions during the conversation, and at the end, we will be able to answer them. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce both Sarah Reisman and Dr. Kelly Morgan. Sarah Reisman is Chief Curator and Director of National Academician Affairs at the National Academy of Design. From 2014 to 2021, she served as Executive and Artistic Director of the Shelley and Donald Rubin Foundation. And from 2008 to 2014, she was the Director of New York City's Present for Art Program at the Department of Cultural Affairs, where she managed more than 100 permanent public art commissions across the five boroughs. Reisman has taught at UPenn, SUNY Purchase School of Art and Design, and since 2016 is on the faculty of, at SBA's Curatorial Practice Master's Program. She's been awarded residencies by Art Omai, the Foundation for a Civil Society, Artis, CEC ArtsLink, Futura, and the Montello Foundation, and earned her BA at the University of Chicago and was a Helena Rubenstein Curatorial Fellow at the Whitney Museum of American Art Independent Study Program. Dr. Kelly Morgan is a professor of the practice and the inaugural director of curatorial studies at Tufts University, a curator, educator, and social justice activist who specializes in American art and visual culture. Her scholarly commitment to the investigation of anti-Blackness within those fields has demonstrated how traditional art history and museum practice work specifically to uphold white supremacy. Besides her own curatorial practice, she mentors emerging curators and regularly trains staff at various museums to foster anti-racist approaches in collection building in collection building, exhibitions, community management, engagement, and fundraising. Over the past year, Dr. Morgan has become a leading and influential voice in bolstering anti-racist work in art museums. She has held curatorial positions at the Indianapolis Museum of Art at Newfield, the Birmingham Museum of Art, and the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, as well as teaching positions at the Tyler School of Art and Architecture at Temple University and Wayne State University, where she merged the classroom and the museum gallery to create various anti-racist paradigms for how curators can actively address the complexities of traditional art history, community engagement, and scholarly innovation. In 2014, Morgan was awarded a dissertation fellowship from the Ford Foundation and earned her PhD in Afro-American Studies and a graduate certificate in public, his, in public history museum studies from the University of Massachusetts Amherst in 2017. Welcome to you both. It's so good to see you both on the screen together. I keep spending this time only <laughs> with one of you. With How the are other, you doing? Yeah. I know. Hi. It's hi. good to be here. I'm on Lisa. Like it's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, it's almost <laughs> over. Hi, <laughs> But no, this, it was really great. It was so great from start to finish, right? Quote, unquote, it was such a great experience, like getting to know you all and the academicians and Greg and Diana, just everybody. It it's was been great to be a fly on the wall with all of your conversations. So <laughs> thank you guys for um, leading really interesting conversations with these artists. I'm going to step back now and let you guys get at it, but I will join you again a little bit later. So I'll see you later. Thanks, Adrian. Um, I guess I, if I can start with a question and a comment that it's been really interesting to 
start to get to know the National Academician community through your work, Kelly, um, in that I started at the National Academy in mid-June this year. And the digital annual, which is the first digital annual in the history of, uh, it's the first digital one in the history of the Academy, of course, and it's the 190th, I think. Um, it's just been a great way to, like, I've, I think I've moderated half of the conversations right. with artists and architects in the show. And so it's it's been this great moment to understand the diversity of practices and aesthetics and um, concerns that the Academy members have. And I just, if I can read from your statement, um, sure. I mean, I could even share the screen and have people see it if that is, because I don't know how many people tuning in have ha actually gone to see the annual. <laughs> um, well, so the t I want to start with the title, E Pluribus Out of Many. Um, and so you start with this statement and it's kind of a history lesson, which I think we really, we really have needed in the last two years um, in this kind of moment of layered crises all at once. Um, and you're a historian, so it, it, it's meaningful that it comes from you. You start your introduction with this statement. In 1782, the United States adopted E Pluribus Unum Out of Many One as its motto, signaling the country's global emergence as a new United Nation comprised of 13 different colonies with very diverse populations. Behind the Latin phrase was the great American ideal of unity through diversity, an ideal so epic in the framers' minds that it completely disregarded the abject oppression and violence committed against indigenous, enslaved women, immigrant, poor, and disabled Americans. So you, that's quite the call out. <laughs> calling out our founding fathers. Thank you. Um, how, so when did the idea to, to frame this exhibition through the lens of e pluribus not unum, <laughs> e right. pluribus out of many and leaving the, the one out, but when, how did you come to this thinking um, and has it, is it in connection with being asked to curate this show or is it something that goes back further? I think it was, honestly, it was January 6th. You know, it was watching that debacle, you know, transpire, you know, as an American, as a black woman. And I was like, you have got to be kidding, right? <laughs> right, because not even six months ago, or maybe, yeah, six months. I'm like, not even six months ago, um, peaceful protests are happening. And, right. right, people are getting just bulldozed. And, um, and it just, as an Americanist, you know, as somebody who's steeped in American history, I was just like, you know, when are, when are we ever going to actually be honest about what the hell is going on, you know, in this country and why? You know, I, I think I, I exist in this interesting spot, you know, both in the academy as well as in, you know, the sort of art museum or art space where, you know, I have like one foot in history and one foot in the contemporary arena. So there's a lot of conversation about, you know, constructions of blackness and black artists and, you know, black image, black rep representation. Um, but there was never any kind of significant address to like why black artists historically are making the work that they're making, <laughs> you know, and what they are creating against in a certain regard, you know, what, you know, black and brown um, museum workers, you know, are up against in institutions. Um, and it just, it was this culminating moment for me because I was like, here's the national, like here is the problem, <laughs> right? On full view, um, you know, few days before, uh, well, not a few days, a couple of weeks, you know, before the, um, the inauguration um, and just listening to the spin, you know, in the media and, you know, just like that refusal to call it, you know, an insurrection and just all of the things. And I was just like, this is, I was livid, <laughs> you know, so on the phone with friends of mine, like, are you watching this? Like, can you believe this? And um, when, so I was also in this space of like thinking through, you know, how museums and particularly historical art spaces, so places like the Academy, places like PAFA, um, I'm trying to think the Royal Academy of Britain, you know, how these, these really, you know, 200 year old, you know, 150 year old institutions really exist as visual markers, you know, of this problem, mm -hmm. you know, and of this mythology. And, um, and so, you know, 
figuring out and you know processing through that history is when I um or in the midst of that you know is, is when uh Greg reached out to ask, so to ask me to curate the show so it was so funny in our first conversation because like my initial response was like are you sure <laughs> you know you won't why, why would you say are you sure what like well because that was also maybe six weeks six or eight weeks after you know the the entire new fields job description drama mm -hmm. um and it was still kind of playing out you know in the in the media and i didn't necessarily know you know where i was gonna land <laughs> on the other side of that situation um so i was just like oh you know are you sure and he was just like yeah you know i'm totally sure i was like okay so it was a really great i think because of the history of the institution it was a really great space and the annual kind of you know like rejuvenate it right bringing it back um, it had been a few years since we did one yeah um, yeah you know, and I was like, and I think as a country, you know, like not having, you know, not really being this polarized, like since the Civil War, you know, politically, um, mm -hmm. COVID, and th there were tons of people who felt like I did, you know, <laughs> you know, Black, white, Asian, you know, Latinx, you know, looking at the insurrection, like what is going on? So I felt like it was a good time yeah. to really grapple, you know, with the realities of our society and what we what we consider to be you know, concepts of unity, freedom, um, Americanness, you know, right. that, that kind of thing. Maybe, can you go back? You said something about how interesting it would be to do the show, or this is what I heard, um, uh, because of the, inst the institution's history being the National Academy of Design. What about the history for you? Is it the duration? Is it specific moments? Is it, um, I mean, it could be, the perceived elitism, the actual elitism, right? There are these moments of, I mean, it's it's perceived, it's been perceived to be exclusive. So, mm -hmm. right. And yeah, but but at the same time, here here we are. <laughs> so, yeah. Doing yeah, this. It was yeah. all of those yeah. things, Sarah. Yeah. You know, to be honest, it, it really was. It was, you know, the history, the um this idea that because it's an, you know, I think historically, I don't think that's the case, right? Re recently or recent, or I should say in recent years, but because it's an artist run institution, it's gonna be, somehow it's gonna be different, despite the fact that it's an artist run institution and all of those artists are white men, <laughs> you know, middle-aged white men. Um, so you're perpetuating, you know, right? The same issues, you know, that exist in every other, you know, institution that is founded grounded and run by right white men um and that part you know and and how that has really been a struggle you know for the academy and, and again in recent years you know um getting the history of how you know a lot of academicians were just like you know kind of walked away you know or disconnected them distanced themselves maybe not disconnected you know, but dis distance themselves because the academy wouldn't deal with that history and the realities, right, and the, or the, the um, consequences, you know, of that history and that in in that culture, um, realistically and honestly, you know, it was all of those things, mm -hmm. you know, that I was like, yeah, we're you know we're going to jump in, <laughs> you know, to so, something. So the, the jumping in, I'm I know we're going to get to looking at the show together. But I do, I want to ask, um, you yourself described, you describe yourself in your bio as an activist as part of what you do. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if we could take a moment to think about, or if you could talk through how activism figures into curatorial practice and you're starting up a new program at Tufts and that's, it's a, cur a curatorial MA program, right? Um, well yeah, well, or, we can talk about that because actually I'm going to start, I'm pitching it this first year right. as a certificate okay. because of the, because of the resistance, <laughs> you know, um, in my own department, right. But not so much the, not so much the college. I have a lot of support, you know, with the right. deans and other faculty, but you know, our history, it, it has its problems. You know, and just and there were, you know, some there were some interesting meetings <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. Um, and so that's something that myself and one of the deans just kind of decided was like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna pitch it as um or as to say launch it, you know, next fall mm -hmm. as a certificate program, um, to just see how 
the department can to see if I should say the department can even hold it right you know because it like you said it is those there are those um well I should say it like this when you are somebody like that comes into a space that does like very direct and staunchly anti-racist work you know it it sort of draws the racism out of the yeah. pores right <laughs> right, right. The, okay. by virtue of talking about it you can bring yes. it up. Right. Yes. And it can and it can flip. It can be mm -hmm. perceived totally as so being embedded in what you're saying, even if mm -hmm. you're just addressing it. Right. Yeah. And I have, you know, I'm not a DI, a DEI consultant. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm an anti-racist scholar. So right. my approach is very differently. On top of, you know, I've I've, I've like dealt with it personally, you know, in so many right. different points in my career. So now I just have like a no tolerance. You know, so when it happens, I'm just like, nope, this is that. Like, I'm like, A or one plus one is two. <laughs> you know, right. whether you want to believe me or not, the answer is two. Figure it out. I'm logging <laughs> off the meeting. See you back. You know? <laughs> so I don't, so it's been this interesting, like, a way in which even I've changed, you know, my approach. But some of that is the, the, the so when you, when you were asking about the activism, part of it, um, and this isn't the whole of it, but part of it was really like a civil rights framework, you know, mm -hmm. that it had come to me, you know, like in like as things were happening, particularly, you know, in Indianapolis, because I was like, huh, you know, there's this way that like I just show up and then because actually it was funny because my my deputy director had said this to me, you know, years ago and he was like, your work just kind of attracts it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so say that again, your work, what? the work attracts it. Right. Right. And so, um, so, <laughs> you know, toward, you know, a couple months before my resignation, he was just like, girl, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it is just, it is, um, it's that much more like severe. And I said, yeah, because I've gotten a little more savvy, you know, with like how I show up in the space. Um, and then those conversations, you know, kind of coming home and like hindsight, you know, or doing like more kind of my own like personal meditative med meditations on it. And I was like, yeah, you know, the, the, um, the sit-ins, you know, were literally just black people showing up, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. Rosa Parks was just a black woman who right. showed up, you know, right. and I mean, granted there was strategy right in that showing up. Um, but visually, right. Coming back to what we do, you know, in the visual field, you know, how people visually perceived it you know, was just literally Black people being in places that they were not supposed to be in. And then the world, you know, got a chance from 63, right, to damn near 67, <laughs> you know, got a chance to see the way in which, you know, that sort of vitriolic, you know, violent, yeah, very dangerous reactionary response from white Americans. So I was like, oh, yeah, you, we don't actually have to do, like, that's the start. You know, it's like, it's not necessarily rocket science. Like some of this really is about just showing up in the space in a particular way. Mm -hmm. um, and as I started to unpack that, you know, I went, I like went back, you know, to like my civil rights history, secondary scholarship, you know, some primary source material that I have too of like letters um, that were compiled between like Shuttlesworth and Ralph Abernathy and, you know, all of those folks, you know, King and Malcolm and whatever. Um, because my faculty <laughs> that trained me, you know, were faculty who were actually, you know, original members of SNCC. Wow. Um, and it was like, huh. So then I went from there kind of back to Black abolitionist frameworks in the 19th century. And I just started to kind of piece together ways that those activist resistant frameworks can be applied to museum spaces. And then even more so, you know, to our history itself. You know, so that's what I'm doing here. But so it, it's so so interesting. Um, but what do you say? What if? What do you say to somebody who doesn't think that activism belongs in these spaces? I mean, or that I'll put it put it another way. I, like as a curator, more of art than architecture myself. Mm -hmm. Like somebody could say to me, in my past, I've curated exhibitions that are not necessarily activist, but address. Um, social justice issues, right? Mm -hmm. And so someone might say, why is this an art? Why does this have to take up space here? Can't art be an escape? And I wonder um, how you respond to that kind of 
attitude? Only, I mean, that's only true if art existed on its own and it doesn't. <laughs> right. And we're so good. <laughs> yeah, and we know that. Yeah. You know, yeah. if it was being made in a vacuum, that would be great. Right. But it's not, you know, and there are, you know, there are very real systems, mm -hmm. you know, that these institutions, art, healthcare, criminal justice, education, <laughs> right? You can go down the list. Right. Um, and I'm at, I don't know, Sarah, like I'm at a point now where like that's such an irresponsible stance to take, I think. I think because, so too. You know, we've literally like watched it, like you can't deny it anymore. Like at this point, that's like, what do you call it? Like willful ignorance. Yeah. And that I feel like that's I've experienced that. willful ignorance for yeah. sure. Um. <laughs> you know, it's like that's um, how people die. Like, nope. <laughs> no, and that's also a, a statement of privilege, whether it's class, race, or gender. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a particular, like I was having a conversation with some of my, you know, white colleagues here in, in Boston, you know, from MFA, Harvard, you know, ICA, and um, you know, super great people. And we were we were talking about, well, one asked about, you know, just my practice and that kind of thing. And he was just like, oh my God, Kelly, like that's so much extra work. You know, like where, cause you know, the curatorial schedule is, you know, is, is ridiculous, you know, just how busy we are and like how much we move around. And he was just like, you know, where do you find the time to do the extra work? And I was like, well, you know, as a black woman from a working class background, I was like, it's not extra for me. Right. You know, it's how I experience the world. I was like, it's extra for you because you have never had to navigate navigate systemic discrimination, <laughs> right. right? The barriers right. aren't there, you know, for you, but particularly as a, as a white guy, right? So I was like, you know, the barriers aren't there for you in the same way that they have been there for me since I have been in the world. You know, and it was like this moment as a collective, you know, where everyone was just like, oh my God. You know, and I was like, yeah, chew on that for a minute, you know, <laughs> you know, like there is that, that over and around and under and through is something that I have, that I've like, literally, I remember my, I can remember my mother and grandmother and, you know, father and grandfather, like starting to rear me and how to do that when I was like six. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, I mean, I want to, I do want to make a plug for your um, TED talk that, that. I think oh, you did true. you did it in March, but it it sort of went public maybe in early July. Yes. Something like that. So it's maybe we can put that in the chat. It was it, it's interesting and in talking about um your experience in terms of race and cultural institutions mm -hmm. at all these different levels. And yeah. um so when you have that, you we can literally see it differently, you know, which is what Du Bois says, right? And so is a black folk. Or that's the point he's trying to make when he's talking about two myths and double consciousness. Um, and that is very literally true. Like, you, you know, you see it different. And that's true for everybody. You know, not just Black folks. <laughs> you know, that's true for whatever, right, you are on um, your worldview, you know, or, you know, and how you're upbringing and, and how you're literally socialized to understand things. You know, so for... Um, for me, that that fight, that push, you know, that activism is is just very, it's inherent for me. You know, now if I had come from, you know, a privileged black family, maybe it wouldn't, you know, it would be different, you know, or maybe, you know, one never knows. But I'm just saying, you know, if like circumstances would be different, you know, maybe I would be quieter. You know, but in that in I'm glad that, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I'm really glad you're not. I, do we? Do you want to look at the show? Should we? Sure. Yeah. Like so, um, I have a. We made a little list. It's a short list of artworks that I think, for us, have. I mean, here's here. This is just a good exercise for those who haven't. If anyone hasn't seen the show, who's watching from home or wherever you are, um, this is the kind of starting point, point. Um, and. If we look at artists and galleries, I think this was um, an artist you were excited about. And I, I think one of the things we talked about leading up to tonight's talk was if we could kind of rest on or spend time with some of the works that were presented a kind of surprise. And I mean, I think one of the questions is what can 
this digital annual, and I will acknowledge that like I had, um, you know, didn't really have a role in organizing it because I started at a point when it was, you know, the selections were pretty much done. But I, but what was interesting for me to see is I had the expectation of a, a digital show being a kind of fly through of a 3D space. And this takes a different, um, this is designed by Link by Air, I think. And it's, it's set up in such a way that you have this depth of information, um, a statement from the artist, and then kind of some wrote in how they reflected on the year, a biography. Um, and then there, there's the opportunity with some of the images to kind of go closer and you know go in to see more detail. Does that work? Yeah. So we can really look at like the the texture of the painting. Um, do you want to talk about this work at all? You had um, yeah, I mean it was one that um and I'm like thank you for like pointing um for like demonstrating all of all of that <laughs> here. I think that's one of the things that we as a team, you know, were really adamant about. Right. You know, we didn't want it to be like, you know, the 3D like uh what do they call them now? You know, when you're looking for apartments online. It's like a, <laughs> a 3D rendering or a flyer. Yeah. Like, um, you know, we didn't want it to be that. You know, we wanted, um, and that was like myself, you know, other um, academy academy staff, as well as, you know, the design team for Link by Ear. Um, we wanted it to be, what we wanted it to offer, you know, visitors something different. You know, we didn't necessarily want it to be a type of, direction or wayfinding, mm -hmm. you know, um, because, in, and this is what's so great about working with, you know, a variety of people, particularly when you're working with designers, because there's so many other options, you know, there's so many other possibilities, you know, that come from doing something in the digital space. You know, if we're just going to recreate, you know, what somebody, what you could get through right, walking through a gallery, Right. I walk through a gallery, you know, right. um, and so we wanted it to be different in, in that regard. And you know, Eric's work was really um, struck me. One because I think sometimes I can be so literal when I'm looking at contemporary art. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, it's about the environment and like you know, an oil spill, right? <laughs> right? Just <laughs> totally like, oh my god." Um, but when I was reading, you know, just his his response, you know, and um, and the way, and this is the other thing about it, several other works too, particularly the landscapes, that like pushed me, like challenged my own sort of literalness, right, or, or preconceived notions, you know, about what contemporary landscape is about, you know, or maybe should be about, because um, we can be so in our head space sometimes as curators. You know, and I loved, you know, that comment, you know, uh, you know, on the environment, mm -hmm. but like its own sort of natural decay, you know, and even, and so our presence, because it's like he kind of stumbled upon it, you know, when he was writing um, about it, and it created this whole other world, you know, for him. So there's like escapism in a way, which was needed, you know, <laughs> I think we all needed it, you know, at the beginning in, in the spring of this year. Um, but it was also really great to be able to bring, right, his own words or the artist's, you know, words to the, the work. It's like, I had written, you know, a bunch of interpretive, <laughs> a bunch of interpretation for a lot of them um, before I had actually read through the, uh, the statements um, in totality and like with a fine tooth comb, you know, and then once I did that, I was just like, yeah, my voice, like, nope. You know, because I'm very, that's another aspect of my curatorial practice where I, I'm very adamant and deliberate about decentering myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, and how often do you walk through a contemporary art gallery, museum or commercial, and actually see the artist's words right. you know, next to the work, even when it, even if it is done, it's like, oh, this is a special case, you know, or there's this poem that the artist also wrote, you know, <laughs> that's commodified along with the work, right? <laughs> You know, um, and so that was something else that I wanted to bring, you know, to. Um, That's great. I think it. Yeah. I think it really does help um, take take this in a in a different direction because, on the one hand, for some people, I mean, and we for some the idea of having it in the virtual realm is like limiting, but I think what happened in the way this was conceived and designed and and realized is that there's 
there's depth that if you spend time with the the exhibition, um, you get more. And it's more than it's it. I mean, it's like a catalog actually in the way yeah. that it's set up. It's a it's a book of more than a hundred pages, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. and you can get closer to the work in ways right. that you would never be able to do, right. you know, in in a physical space too. Let's go to um, Leslie Wayne, who whose work you know well. I think um, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Here we want to go here. So this is um, in a gallery titled. What's the title? This get this is. These are there. Many windows of possibility. Really yeah. For this gallery. Um, oh, I thought it's many windows of. Is it many? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's how checked out I am, sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, many windows of possibility because, yeah. okay, so these are like the three works that I felt like really anchored mm -hmm. the, the exhibition itself. Um, and the, the idea of looking forward, being present and backward, you know, all at the same time. Um, they really created this continuum for me, even where Leslie's work is, is newer, you know, Carrie's work is older. Um, Squeak's work, you know, is, I also thought kind of like calling out, <laughs> right, in a way, like visualizing. Right. Um, and, and I was like, this is, you know, and it's, and it was, I think, two different or various medium too, because I also feel like Leslie's work is, is very sculptural. You know, so I wanted, you know, people to be able to see the different ways, you know, in which we kind of exist, you know, in a continuum. Mm -hmm. That history has always been a continuum. Um, and Leslie's piece, particularly the title of, you know, the universe is on the inside, you know, being this kind of moment of calling, I think, calling us into our own selves. Right. You know, so as we're navigating, you know, this moment of like, what the hell is getting ready to happen? <laughs> so you know, it speaks to kind of a retreat, retreat yeah. inward. Yeah. You which know, a lot of us have to is, do. You know, what are what is our role, you know, in that? Um, I'm also super into like space and astronomy. <laughs> you know, in the universe. Like I have a telescope. You know, oh yeah, let's let's look closer. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. I'm a stargazer, like I do all those things. So that was here we see. Like, the stars are here. Mm -hmm. You know, and it creates that kind of like, is vortex the right word? You know, it was cool because it's like the 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 universe is actually on the inside of the window pane, right? Uh, but even as like a a two D work, you know, you get that like she does such an amazing job um, where you get that dimension, you know. And I was just like, that's the like that's it for me. <laughs> You know, trying it's, it's, it's its own inner world and there's dimensionality to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the different materials that give it a sculptural quality. Um, yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah. her work and Sangram's work were like two words that I looked at and was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that is totally me right now. <laughs> so it sounds like you had a good time looking at the work and coming up with the kind of sub themes within the exhibition and writing kind of write it maybe you were relieved that you didn't have to write about every every art every artist and architect because it's 101 I think right yeah it was um it was it's over 100 many, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think how many I think all in all I did about 45 <laughs> okay that's a lot though you know, yeah, yeah which was still a lot and yeah. um and I was like oh my god you know, because I was, it, it was like, I finished that because I mean, you can, you can relate to this too, where it's like interpretive script, you know, you have to get your, you have to get your labels done, <laughs> you know, and how that is, you know, um, how that can be such a process, you know, so it was, that was my focus, you know, where it was like, I got to get my labels done. You know, I have to <laughs> well, there's that, the thing that, my process for the last probably 10 years has been to write an essay and then to go back and cut it up and do the labels oh, for the essay. Okay. Yeah. So, and it's not, it, but then there's this process of editing the labels and suddenly 
you know, like maybe the brochure or the catalog is at the printer. Mm -hmm. like, Wait, did I, this doesn't actually make sense now. Oh, it's because it's taken out of context and I have to build it out again. But it at least, it's a way of getting a start for those labels. They end up often, you know, addressing other information that emerges in the process of writing. Um, if it's, you know, there's extra research that comes up in the process, but I think that's that's my approach to labels is <laughs> do the essay first and then like kind of pull it apart into sections that then get refashioned into the. Yeah, um, that's a great idea. I yeah, think the just, the, idea. just, what do we call them? Um, descriptive object labels. Mm -hmm. And now, now something we're working on at the Academy that's, um, it's an exercise we've started with um, someone named Maya Jeffries, who's an accessibility consultant as we're learning how to write verbal descriptions um, for low vision and blind visitors. We don't, you know, we don't actually have the space to do visits right now, but we're in the process of finding one and, and we have some exhibitions coming up that'll be in, you know, in spaces, That's you know, exciting. stay yeah. tuned. But so, so we're working to make the work accessible in the ways that we can, but I think the labels are a big part of that. So, um, where would you like to go next? I think I'm looking at the list we have. I wanted to actually look at um, a couple of architects because for me, that was kind of a surprise in this in the process of doing this, um, doing these conversations, um, getting to know the exhibition was to see how with some of the architects, their projects that could be presented that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to show very easily in a gallery um, or, <laughs> They would be shown differently. So I'll look at um, um, Wendy Evans Joseph. Um, for me, her work, this work was exciting. Um, so this is up from the people protests and change in DC. And it's, it's an educational exhibition at the Martin Luther King Memorial Library in DC. Um, and I have, I knew a little bit about this library from a different perspective. I was on a jury to select an artist, uh, Zenobia Bailey, to do an artwork for the kind of double height space in the center of the library that it was renovated or it's being renovated. I actually don't know if it's done. But so this is, to me, this is kind of amazing to think about um, this as a contribution to an exhibition. It's like an exhibition within the exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe I'll just scroll so people can see a little bit about um, the work. Oh, so yeah, and I was like, and their yeah. um, their reflection was was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the statement or further down, reflecting yeah, on the statement, year. and then yeah. um, the in the reflection itself. Oh yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, people can go to the website. Yeah, no, it was wonderful. And I think, you know, the, these are the ways in which, you know, these are the, the, again, like visual elements, you know, of like how a project comes together that the public very rarely gets to see, you know, unless there's some um, chronicling, right, of it in the catalog. Right, and here, and this is an example of the, the depth goes even further from, you know, if we have a statement from the artist or architect, and then we have reflecting on the year kind of statement about the pandemic and what that's meant and the po politics that have emerged or kind of, what's the word, exploded or, you know, bubbled up. Um, and then we have, you know, example of, of the studio's work um, Studio Joseph's work below that. So it's like, it becomes a much deeper exploration. Um, you know, and I was excited to see another example of their design senses beyond the beyond vision, a temporary exhibition at Cooper Hewitt that was um, about how equity, equity is tied to access. So this is about the senses and, and shared experience of senses in museum spaces. So I thought that was really brilliant and exciting that this show could kind of capture that. Um, maybe another example is uh, James Wines and that James Newton Wines. So <laughs> I just think this is- uh, That was fabulous, right? <laughs> it's a, yeah, and it's, 
Yeah, and I, I think what um, we can go a little closer if we want, um, but it's this kind of, it's like, you know, the Lady Liberty and, and I mean, it's interesting, Lower Manhattan is landfill, right? Huh? But Liberty is kind of submerged. And it's a, to me, when I saw this, I thought about how, um, what we what what do we do with monuments? Like that's an ongoing question, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do with them? and and the Statue of Liberty feels to me kind of more positive than a lot of the monuments that have been called into question in the last years. However, it's interesting to think about you know what part of it, what are the parts of it that make that kind of communicate the most productive discourse about this country, right? Mm -hmm. um, what would happen if I don't know, there are lots of ways to read this and I'm sort of thinking out loud, but to me, the idea of like the, this is almost buried to some extent. Oh, um, right. I don't know if you, yeah. No, that was my thought, you know, as well. Yeah. Um, and she's also, it's also like uh, fossilized, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been like, it was, it, it's interesting talking about this today, <laughs> you know, talking about this particular piece today, cause I've been reading Stovall's White Freedom, his new book, and he has a new, um, and there's a chapter in the book about um, the Statue of Liberty, you know, and it's it's communication, right, of whiteness as liberty, you know, or whiteness as citizenship, mm -hmm. you know, and so and I think in in the time, you know, of, of working on the show, you know, I was talking a lot, you know, to a lot of academicians, but even just to the design, uh, the academy staff about, you know, what we're witnessing is this sort of, uh, it's like, of kind of whiteness eating itself from the inside out, <laughs> you know, or like destroying itself from the inside out. And this is whiteness as a social and political phenomena, mm -hmm. you know, and, and like the, again, like the, um, the really sorted ways, you know, in which it exists in opposition literally to like everything else, you know, and how that is not sustainable you know, literally to the earth, <laughs> right? It's no longer sustainable. So looking at this work now, yeah, yeah, like in that regard, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, and he did this in like 2017. Yeah, I think, I think so. Um, you know, which was also really fascinating, yeah. you know, because I was like, it, it, it predicted, you know, like coming, getting this submission, like I said, two months, you know, after January 6th, and I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. How great is this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he and I had a, a conversation a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And it's interesting. We didn't talk about his work for the show. We actually talked about his work in education. Um, what I understood was that as an architect, he had um supported uh inter is interested in supporting um kind of architectural educational opportunities mm -hmm. for a wider array of students because it's it's historically a, a practice that is very difficult to be part of without certain resources in place, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, really lovely conversation. And then then I looked back at the work and I thought, it's so brilliant. Why don't it's we tell so brilliant. Yeah. 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 Well, I know you so, want to talk right. about Elena um, Herzog's Herzog. work. Yeah. yeah, so go to her. I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I guess what I like about this work in the context of um, the annual um, is how Alana's work is at, like it's architectural. It's, I mean, it's not functional architecture. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's not a building, but it's. Um, you know, architectural intervenes on the architecture of the exhibition space. It involves craft, it involves um, scavenging and pulling together materials from different sources. I've been in her studio in the past where it's like, you know, they're rugs, they're textiles from her travels. Um, so this was produced in 2020. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm in some ways, the abstraction of her work, le puts me, it gives me a kind of freedom to just appreciate the aesthetics and I maybe not so much looking for meaning, but um, a kind of order of the space or yeah. thinking about the disorder of the moment. Um, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that's the beauty about it. I thought, you know, even any, a lot of artists, like, like I think about Lisa Hoke's work too, you know, and in, right. in terms of using like found materials, you know, to, just to create something that makes sense. <laughs> you know, a lot of, um, a lot of the conversations I've had, you know, with the academicians over these last, you know, what, six weeks, seven weeks, mm -hmm. um, has talked a lot, we've talked a lot about that, like the way that artists can make, you know, the, the intangible and various, right. you know, forms of intangibility, you know, very, very tangible. Um, so I can appreciate that, you know, both in Herzog's work and in um, Hulk's work too. It's the Hulk, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a few more artists on our hit list. <laughs> um, and I don't know if we, if we want to open it up to questions or keep going. Oh, I mean, yeah, we, I didn't even, realize we, what time it was. I'm yeah, we even, have, we even have some questions that I think um, were prepared for us. <laughs> it sounds like that is my time, my cue, is that right? It is. Hi. Oh, that was my screen just did something so strange. Okay. I'm glad I'm still here. <laughs> well, I'm here. Um, well, I, I, one, I mean, you guys covered so many things. And so I don't, I don't know that I have um, specific questions, um, but I think it's really interesting to see two different curators approach this uh, exhibition in these conversations. Um, so I actually, I'm curious maybe, I'm now lying, I do have a question. I'm curious maybe <laughs> about um, what it was like to um, sort of, for Kelly to have this other voice interact, interject, you know, have conversations about a show that you curated and, and what that experience is like, what you um, maybe took away from that other perspective interacting with your exhibition. Yeah, no, I thought it was wonderful because I felt, I was telling, Sarah, we talked uh, the other day and I was like, it was so great um, because I was trying to create different points of access, you know, for different kinds of people. And I was like, and that's kind of why, like I do all the work that I do, <laughs> that I do the work that I do in the ways in which I do it. So I had missed, I wasn't able to see Sarah's conversations live. So I had to go back and watch, but everyone I was just like, you know, <laughs> that close. Um, <laughs> And just to, just because I love like having the way that people can bring, I mean, I guess we talk about this in our work too, but like, you know, bring their own training, bring their own interests, like, but then bring their own lenses and see something totally different. Um, where it's not always about like appreciation of the thing, right, that somebody else did. Um, right. I thought all of that was like, it was like great, you know, even, like sometimes, like I said, for me, it's not always like planned out per se, <laughs> you know, but when it comes together <laughs> like that, you know, six months later, I'm like, yeah, that was good. That was a good thing. You know, I thought about that correctly. Um, so no, I thought it was wonderful. You know, I think we need to think more about that as curators because we can be so silo, like talking to my, my fellows in the, um, my program at AMC, you know, and I'm trying, that's another culture, you know, that I'm trying to disrupt that this is my thing and my artist and my show um, to the point where we don't, you know, find entry points, mm -hmm. you know, of conversation that then allows everybody else in. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you to that point, like, do you find that that it feels like there's um, like the, uh, trying to like retain um, the authorship or ownership over that, like what's happening and like that's maybe preventing, <laughs> Sarah's telling me I hit it on the head, preventing sort of the spirit of collabor collaboration in curatorial. I mean, I think that happens certainly. I mean, there's some artists who are great at collaborating and love collaborating and there's some artists who aren't. <laughs> and I think that happens in that space <laughs> as well. Um, but like, it, I'm not a curator. So it's interesting to hear that uh, perspective come from that that side. So I'm curious about how you're disrupting that or influencing a next generation of curators with that. Yeah, I mean, some a lot of it is just about decentering, um, you know, the curatorial voice where it's like, I'm not the only authority. Mm -hmm. um, another one um, or influence there has, has been my time at Newfields because um, we work in, I always say we work as like a unit, like as a, an amoeba. <laughs> you know, and 
um, separate from our, our leadership, interestingly enough, but that's another story. Um, but that was the first time that I had worked in an institution that had actually structured, you know, the, the functionality of how exhibitions and programs, you know, even got conceptualized. Um, and that was really, we called it the machine. <laughs> you know, because it works like a real oil machine. Um, and and it, it, we produced all kinds of, you know, really wonderful stuff, um, you know, across the institution. So across like, you know, 12 different departments. Um, so that was another, that's another one. Um, and I think with students, you know what, I mean, using this as, a, I mentioned it actually the other night when I was talking to them, when I think in the conversation with Lorraine, you know, I've been using this as an I as an example of that. Like, you know, Sarah getting hired in the middle of a pandemic. You know, having something, you know, that um, worked as, as this vessel. You know, for her entry point, not just into the academicians, but into the institution itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, which was super. Which I was just like that. <laughs> You know, it's like fascinating. Um, and just, you know, and it's, it's really, it makes me feel like it's, you know, it's working, Adrian, right? It's like some of this stuff where it's like, I have no, re like, I wouldn't necessarily say I don't have a measure, but it's not like there's a, a place you can go to study this stuff. Well, not yet, but, <laughs> um, but like, it wasn't something that somebody taught me, right? If I'm, if I'm like making this make any kind of sense. Um, it's, it's, but it's, it's wonderful to see it come together and, and function for other people, right? And I mean, yeah, and, and just thinking about what the, the way that we acquire our skill sets or our expertise, if we can, if I can call it that as a curator, I mean, I feel like a lot of what's, as a contemporary curator, I'm learning from artists, I'm learning from people I work with. And so I found, I was excited to be part of the series and I think because I, I, I don't know, I've worked in environments where that curatorial authorship is really, there's tension around it, but it's still preserved or it's like expected to be preserved. And I don't, I don't know that it always makes sense because if an idea has, I think it's like if an idea has legs or has kind of um, weight and, and, and can transform, it's like, uh, it's, it becomes interesting not necessarily more interesting, differently interesting as different people take it up, right? So it's like a, a, an idea that can be interpreted by multiple, multiple people from multiple entry points. Like that's, that's exciting. That's, that's, yeah. I hope that's part of our institutional model going forward. I mean, absolutely. absolutely. That's how you know it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, how, like seriously, like how many times are we in meetings with people? In our in you know various points in our careers or our lives and we're like oh my god right <laughs> and something is a good idea because the trustees said it was right or something is a good idea because the the older white dude in the room is like this is what it's gonna be you know and we're like mm. but we have to go through the motions right of make and sometimes like of staffs making the bad idea <laughs> the good idea um or come across you know as good you know, and so it was, it's just really good. To, I'm like, I'm just super frank about these things. <laughs> no, I, well, I think you're touching on so many experiences. No, I'm just like, I'm just it resonates. <laughs> it resonates, Kelly. That's the, well, and I yeah. think the, so the idea, I mean, I think it's super refreshing to hear both of you say, you know, or, or speak to this idea of um, opening up that uh, curatorial space to other voices. And I, to, you know, full disclosure, I, I've talked to Sarah about this. So it's one of the reasons I thought she was a great, you know, addition to this team is when she was talking, you know, early when she was being hired, when she was talking about sort of her perspective, she was very open about like, well, I might not always be the voice or, I, you know, other people, you know, should take that platform. And I felt like that was exactly the kind of perspective to um, upend some of these um, uh, barriers that have been so ingrained in just like the arts arts in, in general, the arts institutions, especially old arts institutions. And so both of you guys coming into this um, exhibition with these, like that openness, I think has informed the conversation as well. Yeah. So I guess Sarah, the flip side for you is what, you know, Kelly alluded to, you, you know, started in the, you know, with this, this exhibition already growing, happening, you were, had to jump into it. So what was it like to come into a different curator's vision and then have to sort of 
lead people through it um, in this well, way. I, I mean, I think, yeah, I think the framework for it is so open in a way, e pluribus out of many. It allows for so many different ideas um, for, in terms of artists and architects whose work is featured here. Um, so I don't, I feel like it was the openness made it really easy yes. to dig into. Um, and I also thought I was like excited when I saw the list of artists that would be part of the program. And then, you know, that I could suggest a few, it, it felt really exciting. I mean, there was the, the last talk that I was part of was with, um, was with Joyce Kosloff. And that was a talk which, um, based on the concept of your show, Kelly, I thought E Pluribus, while well, Joyce is an artist who is one of the instigators, organizers of um, We Make America, a, a kind of collective protest activist group of artists making props, like, like the torch that we saw in James Wines's drawing. It's like, you know, a large torch that's taken to different protests. And she invited another artist, uh, Tamara Geyer, to be part of the conversation. And for that, that kind of shift in how we could move the conversation forward, I just felt like that was really it was exciting that there was room for that. So, I mean, thank you both <laughs> for, for enabling that that kind of thinking to play out because it was so the, such a porous structure that you created. And um, and I think it's important in thinking what what can an annual be. You know, we've talked since I started about can can the annual go from every second year being in New York to being in another city in the U.S. Since this is a national academy, what can that look like? I mean, I think this project helped me think through what what an annual can be, um, where it can be, and what are the ways that it can be kind of more specifically thematic, so that it you know maybe maybe there's you know a smaller group of artists in the next artists and architects in the next iteration. But I think I think it, it for me it was just really helpful in understanding what a show like this can be. So I think that's a great note to end on because I want to thank you both <laughs> for participating, for again, bringing your insights and perspectives to these conversations. It's been really a pleasure for me to get to um, be a fly in the wall and interject at the end <laughs> with my couple of questions. Uh, and, you know, uh, I hope that we, Kelly, get to have a conversation again in the future, whether it's via, oh. I mean, certainly <laughs> offline, but hopefully again through the National Academy. Um, and Sarah, of course, look forward to doing more programs with you. To the audience, thank you for joining us. This was our last one, but you can see all of our conversations online via the Out of Many website, as well as the National Academy of Design website. So outofmany.nationalacademy.org or nationalacademy.org, we will have them up. And they're on our Vimeo and YouTube channel. So they're, they're all over. Um, oh, go ahead. And also the show Today was meant to be the closing day of the exhibition, but it's extended through December 31st. Thank you for that, Sarah. Yes, the show is extended for another month. Um, so please go check it out. Look at all of the uh, interesting additions, you know, that all the artists have contributed as we were looking at today. Um, I, yeah, we did not see, if, we did not see any Q&A, so that's why I didn't like uh, call out to anybody. If you if you do have any, please feel free to email us as well. Um, you can email probably just the communications at nationalacademy.org email. Thank you everybody for joining. Look forward to seeing you in our next programs. Uh, so look to social media and our newsletter for what's coming up next. And thank you for joining us. Thank you.